right, you guys, what's going on? We are here to talk about Godzilla, King of Monsters. And uh, this was this was an interesting film. Um, I like this movie. I like this movie a lot. I think this was a very high-anticipated movie, and the payoff was grand. I love the storyline. I love where it went. I love where they picked up from where they left off at and they, how they had that tie-in from the Godzilla movie from beforehand, uh, the 2014 film. And bringing it over into 2019 with this new, in particular, twist to it. And I absolutely loved and adored it. Godzilla is back with a vengeance. But not really, he's just back. This is how you do monster fights. I wish we could have got a little bit more, but, you know, the plot doesn't demand all that. Because, you know, the plot... I thought the CGI was great. I thought... The overall looks of each and every monster was great. You know, you get to feel the in particular personalities and, uh, you know, mannerisms of each monster. You get a good feel of Godzilla, because there's a lot of him in this movie. You get a good feel for uh, Rodan, who... I kept looking at him the entire movie, and as cool as he was and everything, I was just thinking like, man, you really remind me of Pterosaur from Beast Wars. But then he acts a certain way. Then I even hear Andre the Black Nerd say this. I said it in the movie theater, but just hearing him say it, I was like, thank you. Somebody else noticed that besides me. He was very star screamish in this movie. He was very star screamy. He just bowed down to anybody when he wasn't in charge. <laughs> he was like the little lieutenant henchman to whoever's wearing the crown at the time. Whichever, whichever, whichever one of y'all king, like, hey, man. I don't know which one of y'all going to do it, but whoever's on the throne right now, I got you. Like, my liege. Which is why he's not back here. He does not get that respect. The underwater passageway is like seeing the old ancient city that Godzilla is, used to call home. Like, you really get a feel for how old these creatures are. They've been here for the longest, probably since the beginning even. And the fact that they were like the original gods, the original titans, the original whatevers to, you know, the human race for the most part. Like, people would worship these creatures and fear these creatures. Like, it just goes to show, like, mythic folklore and stuff like that had its time and had its place. Like, these creatures came from somewhere. These drawings on the walls came from somewhere. These creatures that we know about, like a Loch Ness Monster or a Bigfoot or whatever the F, they all came with a purpose and a reason. Like, they were real. Not in real life. I'm just saying, like, for the sake of the film. These things came with a purpose and reason. Like, having old, 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 archaic drawings and hieroglyphics on the wall with Godzilla fighting Kong or Godzilla fighting um, 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 Ghidorah and how they've been doing this battle thing for quite some time. Like, they're like butthead rivals, my guy. And Godzilla usually, for the most part, always comes out on top, which is crazy the way that turns out. How did that, how did that work? Because Ghidorah was bodying him this entire movie. <laughs> I don't know. I just really like the history of Godzilla. Like, he had people worshiping him. He came from these, in particular, ancient beginnings that we weren't privy to before like it really sets like i said it really sets the tone on how old godzilla is and how much the world has needed him and how much he's been protecting the world ever since like he's a real good monster with a good heart that's just trying to do what he can for the planet it's crazy Ghidorah was a beast i know Ghidorah has always been a beast but Ghidorah was really a beast in this movie like you just show it just goes to show how powerful this guy is like my gosh, the fact that he can regenerate, he survived at an oxygen atom bomb. Oh my goodness, it was crazy. Shooting the lightning and the thunderstorms and stuff like that. He's got his little charge up dragon breath thingy. And like you see it lighten up like he's about to, he's, he's, you know, he about to do it. He about to do it. Run, take cover, please. I love Mothra in this film. Uh, I love that they made her, her, uh, the mother of monsters or the queen of monsters she's the mother of the queen no they said the queen the queen of monsters for whatever reason i i don't understand why but it doesn't matter i still enjoyed it she was very beautiful her the light the light shows on her on her wings the scales it was it was nice it was really nice and then when she got into her fights oh what the fights she was a savage but you know they killed her. Thanks a lot, Ghidorah. You jerk. You know what? I've heard a lot of people say things like, you know, we don't care about the human element in this movie, and 
you know, you're, I just, I, I want to see the monster battles. I'm only interested in the monsters and give me more monster fights and things like that or whatever the case may be. And I can agree to that, but honestly, thinking about it from like a creative standpoint and just overall logical standpoint, that just, it would, it, something like that would never work. Just start to finish with like no, no real rhyme or reason for it. Like the humans had to be involved in it because they're the ones who are waking up all the kaiju. And because they're the ones waking them all up, because it's more than just these three in the back or four technically, because I don't give Rodan that respect. There's a lot more kaiju that's, that was in this film. And I have, I thoroughly enjoyed them. A lot of them looked like overly sized dinosaur Pokemon. But here we go. People complained a lot about the human element in this movie and how it was too much human element and they had, like they didn't have their own story. And again, like I said, I'm inclined to agree with that, but at the same time, not really. Only because I remember watching the classical Godzillas and they were pretty much the same thing. There was a lot of moments where I was so uninterested as a kid because all I hear is people talking. And they weren't even really talking because they were it was it was it was Japanese voiceover. So, you know, people are talking, you hear the voices, but the mouths are still moving or they stop moving or whatever the case may be. But there was more of that than it was the monster fights. And then when it finally got to the monster fights, you're like, okay, cool. Here we are. Monsters destroying the city. This cardboard plastic city set. But yeah, for the most part, it was all pretty much exactly the same. Like, there was a lot of human element in the classical Godzilla, it only makes sense that they kind of transferred it from there to here. I mean, we still got a whole lot of monster fights. I just, you can't say you didn't get enough of that. There was a lot of it. There was a lot of destruction. I mean, Rodan just came out of a volcano and just flew by and destroyed a city just because he flew by. God. That's, that's destruction for the people within itself. Like, you got to keep the human element in it because it just goes... It, it gives more depth to how dangerous these creatures are on this planet. You want to see the people kind of die. You don't want to just see this empty town get blown to smithereens with no, with no human casualty. That doesn't give any depth to how bad these monsters are. You know what I mean? So I thought the human element in it was very necessary. But, you know, what do I know? I'm just a black guy. That being said, the human element did make some things very bad in this film for me. We have to repopulate the planet and... You know, releasing the Titans will make the world start anew, and only their presence will help us rebuild because we are the cancer. We humans are the virus. Like, we haven't heard this spiel a gang of times already. We get it. We're dangerous. We're destroying our world. We need something to reset it, and these monsters are the key. Oh my gosh, how have we not heard this before? I like that the humans were involved enough to try and also still try and defend themselves. Just certain parts of it, it got mad ridiculous. Like... Y'all got, like, ARs and y'all shooting Ghidorah at point-blank range. Man, if y'all don't get up out of there before he fry you... Oh, wait a minute. He already did. Fried you. Why? What? Something Things like that don't make no sense to me. At least make that mess a lot more realistic. You know what I mean? Like, if you're gonna do all that, shoot him from a distance. Don't shoot him up close like you're at his big toe and then get surprised when he stomps on you because you're, like, bothering him. Like, you're not even hurting him. You're just pissing him off. Come on, now. I know you gotta defend yourselves, but there's there's levels to this, my guy. But, all in all, I very much enjoyed this film. A lot better than some of the other ones that's been coming out recently. Uh, with that being said... I would give Godzilla a good, ah, uh, God, I'm going to give Godzilla an 8 out of 10. It was a very enjoyable film, and I think about rewatchability, and this is a movie that you can definitely kind of, like, keep rewatching because the action was so good, and the way they set stuff up was so good, and they closed very well, and they even had a post credit scene. Showing what's to come and stuff like that, which, if you don't know, if you haven't seen it, I'm going to tell you, because, spoiler alert, uh, after Godzilla went, like, full nuke mode and kind of, you know, bodied the rest of Ghidorah, I guess he left one of the heads alive. Well, he didn't leave one of them alive, but one of the heads was still active, and 
Ghidorah has a healing factor. Like, Godzilla took his whole head off earlier, and he grew all that mess back like Hydra. Crazy. And, uh, yeah, so one of those heads survived in this little cult group run by Tywin Lannister. I don't know his real name, but for right now, he's going to be Tywin Lannister because that's what he is. Uh, said, we'll take it. So my guess is that if they don't do it in this next film with the Godzilla versus King Kong type deal, uh, it'll probably come in another film later on. But we're looking to see a Mecha Ghidorah. That's going to be rough. Because Ghidorah right now, as is, just organically strong. Super strong. Took Godzilla to be on, like, whole nuke mode just to take him out. So, adding extra power to him and making him a mecha to these radicals who are trying to exterminate life on the planet so they can have a reset? God dang, son. That's going to be crazy. But, in either case, Godzilla, King of Monsters. Have you seen it? Let me know what you think. If you haven't seen it, go see that film. Go, 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 go see that film. And let me know what you think in the comment section below. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you guys, you know, like it. And uh, as always, I'll be here telling it like it is. I was trying to